Now you gotta work. Horsemanship is the basis of being a good cavalry trooper. We're not talking about the dismounted group this week. This week on the 11th OVC, general horsemanship and how to actually treat your animal. So when it comes to cavalry, uh, one of the things that's important is good horsemanship. Uh, now I don't recall, uh, I don't uh, pretend to be a, a horseman at all. I don't, be I don't <laughs> pretend to be uh, the horse whisperer, uh, but I do care about my horses against what some people say. Uh, I care a lot about them. Uh, in fact, one of the things I always say is that horses are a perfect cross between a cat and a dog. They uh, very, very much have very uh, annoying cat-like tendencies, but at the same time, Horses also have very dog-like tendencies as well. Once you have that relationship built up, once you understand that uh, they what, what, understand what they want and understand what, of course, uh, they understand what you want, then it's a good relationship. Uh, one of the things that's interesting, in fact, this horse right here, uh, many of you saw this horse at the 155th Gettysburg, the GAC reenactment, uh, which was, uh, well, you'll see this picture right here. Uh, kind of one of the famous horses here as far as uh, spilling the guys on the ground. Uh, one of the things that you'll notice with a lot of reenactments is that they will have horses that don't generally have a lot of groundwork, don't have a lot of work period, and they'll take these horses out and uh, they'll go to these events. Now, of course, when it comes to horses, you'll actually have, uh, you'll have some rodeos, okay? You'll definitely have some rodeos, but something to keep in mind is try to do as much groundwork, try to do as much training with the horses as possible. Uh, one of the things that I think a lot of horsemen, or what I've seen at reenactments, is that uh, there's not a whole lot of true horsemen. Again, I don't consider myself a you know, professional horseman or anything like that, but there's a lot of people who uh, just stiff neck rein, uh, don't have a lot of uh, just uh, flexibility or, or I guess adaptability to understanding your horse. They just understand that pull left, pull right, kick them in the gut and, and call it good. Uh, but that's not how these horses work. That's not how, they, uh, that's not how they're trained for the most part. So when it comes to training, you know, I don't care who you use. Uh, there's a lot of really good guys out there. You know, you have uh, Carson James, which is a good guy. You have uh, the uh, Pirelli, you know, Pirelli is a good guy too. Of course, those are the Western guys. Of course, there's a, you know, a lot of good English riders as well, a lot of good English trainers as well. Uh, but horsemanship is kind of fundamental, in fact, that all horses are pretty much the same, and they just want one thing. And honestly, if you just understand one aspect, you'll understand how to train a horse to pretty much do anything, and that's the fact that whatever you want them to do, let them relax and feel at ease at that doing that one thing or in that area and anything you don't want them to do make them work when it comes to that and for the most part uh, they react and whether they're bucking or they're uh, doing anything uh, I guess counter to what you want I would say most of the time that's due to a lack of confidence a lack of confidence in both you uh, and the lack of confidence in themselves uh, so when it comes to training the horse you'll see When it comes to training the horse, uh, you'll see that uh, the more time you spend with the horse, the more time you spend with the horse, the uh, better the relationship will be, even if you make them work. Now this guy's problem right here uh, is both a combination of he doesn't like to work, he's a lazy turd, but also at the same time, he, he don't, he's still, I mean, he's not young by any stretch of imagination, but uh, he's still young enough that he hasn't had all the experiences that our older horses have, and he doesn't have the confidence he needs. Uh, and so uh, with that, a good thing I like to do with a lot of our uh, horses, new and old, even veteran horses, is just good groundwork. Make them understand that, uh, you know, you're the boss and, and uh, that they'll work until you say so, and then let them relax when they do something good. So for instance, I'll get this guy working. Okay. Get him working. Uh, you'll notice how after a little while, this guy right here, again, I'm not whipping him, I'm just encouraging him to go, there we go. This guy, he doesn't like working. After he gets into a, a good trot a little bit, uh, he kind of stops and if you make him go, he throws a fit like a little teenager uh, or like a little kid will. I'll we'll see if he does this real quick. And uh, the key, what I've noticed, guys, in getting horses to not do that uh, is to make them find that point that they work past the point they want to. Make them go past what they want to do. And that makes them realize that you are the boss. Now, a lot of people, they don't train horses. 
they don't train horses uh, to do what they want, what the trainer wants to do. They just let the horse do whatever they want. I know we have, oh no, 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 see here, stops here. There we go, throwing a fit. There we go, okay. Make him work, right? So he, he, he wanted to stop, but I made him and he's throwing a fit. He's realizing that I'm in charge now. Now what this does is this actually allows the horse to realize that you are in charge. He, oh, he's about to stop. Oh, there he goes. He's going to stop here. Nope. Right? He wants, he's, he's challenging me as the leader here. And so he wants to stop. Now, again, what I want, what you ideally want is him to do about 10 rotations without any pressure. Just once I get him in the, in the walk, trot, or gallop at any gait, you just want to make him, hopefully, ideally, oh, he's wanting to stop there. No, no, okay. Now once he's at the trot and I want him at the trot, then I can stop putting pressure on him to, oh, no, until he stops, slows down, no. I wanna make him comfortable at the trot. I'm not gonna give him any pressure as long as he stays at the trot. Now as soon as he stops, I'm gonna give him pressure. And that's, that's teaching, oh, no, 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 okay. And all this does is it builds trust and it builds uh, a relationship of uh, not necessarily a servant master relationship, but a relationship of him listening to you and him trusting you because, no, because you are the leader. Uh, and that's what I've noticed with a lot of horses out there as they don't have the trust or relationship. One thing that I find interesting with a lot of horses, uh, even our own, actually, especially our own, is that uh, we, you know, one of my favorite horses, no, see, he's stopping, no, no, there we go, okay. One of my favorite horses that I use for cavalry, of course, reluctantly, I always give him to some of the uh, newer guys because he's definitely reliable, uh, is, is my, uh, so yeah, my favorite horse for, for cavalry is a guy, man, he'll charge into anything with me on his back. Uh, he'll, I mean, he's chest bumped horses, charging them. I love the guy, he gets in there and fights. Uh, but you give him to any other person. Uh, in fact, at the 155th Gettysburg, uh, a, a girl, a gal trooper rode him. Uh, really nice, really good rider, actually. Uh, but he didn't perform. Uh, in fact, he was a lazy turdy. He didn't perform for her at all. Uh, we had another reenactment out here in which uh, our, one of our new riders uh, basically said, uh, does this horse have any idea what it's doing? Uh, it doesn't seem like he knows what he's doing. Um, uh, when actually, you know, I kind of, you know, and my first reaction was roll my eyes like, yeah, this guy's been through so many different reactments. He knows the formation. No, 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 there we go. He knows the formations. He knows what he's doing. But one thing I've noticed is that he performs completely different with other riders. And this is where you get the stereotypical, oh, I put my grandkids on him. He does fine. And then, of course, you get on this horse and he bucks you off. The reason is because that relationship, no, no, no. Oh, he's pooping. And the reason is that relationship is not built up. Uh, these horses, in fact, this horse that I'm riding right now, uh, I rode him in a couple reenactments, and he's never uh, bucked or reared or, or anything like that on me. Uh, and, of course, we gave him to one of our guys, and at the 155th GAC, you have that classic picture again of uh, him rearing and our guy coming off. Uh, and of course, it was one of those things that, uh, you know, surprised me. And so the training horses, having that relationship is one of the most important things out there. So again, with, when you're out there, forget reenacting. When you're just having a horse, no, 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 I didn't tell you to stop. When you have a horse, keeping him going outside of your reenactment schedule is one of the most important things that you can do. Develop that bond, right? Uh, at the same time, the more you do this, no. The more you do this, the better they will be on new riders. No, no, I didn't tell you stop. The better they'll be on new riders. Um, one other thing I would like to bring out too is that uh, changing gates helps them uh, understand the kind of the process of things and what you're asking them to do. So, uh, oh, 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 there we go. And so I like to go one direction and then go a different direction, right? And so in between each one, I make sure that they're doing a good job. They know they're doing a good job. Good job. Good guy, right? You're working, you're working. Yeah, right? Good guy. Throws a little fit, but the more you work with them, the better they'll be. And like I said, the, uh, 
the relationship that you build, the, the more you do this and, you, and they trust you, the better actually they'll be for even other riders. So uh, like I said, this is, you know, these guys, these horses that we have, we have about uh, 10 horses here at this facility. And, you know, most of them are really good for me, but a lot of them are not really good for other riders. And that's one thing that has, you know, taught me that, you know, they, and they need more time, they need more training, uh, they need more uh, foundational stuff. And so uh, what I like to do is just go ahead and we'll trot the other direction now. So we went that way, now we're going to go the other way, right? So let's go this way. Back, 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 back. Okay, we're going this way now. No, 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 wrong way, wrong way. There we go. There we go, nice, good trot. So again, if you notice, he's getting better already. Originally he was, uh, you know, he's still lazy. You can see he wants to stop, but his ears are pro, oh, no, no. Oh, he almost bucked there, okay, he almost throwing a fit. But notice how he didn't throw a fit this time. He's understanding that I'm, uh, I'm the boss. Now the problem is, you know, oh, no, no. He wants to come back in. Oh, a little bit of a fit thrown there, okay. Again, notice how he was fine there for a little bit. Uh, he was fine going this way, or going the other direction, and when you wanna switch directions, it's something new for him, right? One of the things uh, that I like to see in good horses is every day a new day, meaning uh, do they forget everything you do the next day? Sometimes it seems that way, but if you have a horse that seems to just, all you do is the foundations and the foundations, and every day they forget what you taught them the day before, uh, no, no, go back out. Then uh, obviously that's a horse. I don't. I don't really have patience for uh, for those type of horses. Uh, I just get them uh, or sell them, and uh, you know try to find another horse that uh, at least can can retain something. Um, so again, going back the different way, this is a good drill I like to do to create a good, strong uh, leadership foundation. They have to see you as leaders. I, oh no, no. So they they have to see you as leaders. Uh, and then they'll have that trust in you when you want them to go across. Uh, again, for those horsemen that are out there, you know, you have some horses that, depending on who's on them, depending on who's riding them, they will, no, no, don't slow down. Depending on who's riding them, they will uh, go across any creek stream, they'll dive into anything, uh, holes or bogs or whatever, and no, no. And, uh, but the other one, you know, you have another person on their back, same horse, same stream, same crossing, uh, and what you'll see is that, uh, you know, they won't go. Why? Because they don't have trust in their leader. They don't have trust in uh, that horse. So uh, something to keep in mind here. So he's doing good. I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure on him, if you noticed. Uh, he's, he's, I mean, now I'm kind of being lazy right now for this video. He's uh, cutting the corners pretty good. Uh, but I'm just happy he's not throwing a fit right now. I'm not putting any pressure on him. Oh, he's slowing down. No, don't, no. Oh, you're at the walk. Come here. There we go. So he's cutting the corners, which I shouldn't let him do. Uh, but for this video, I'll, I mean, all I'm focusing on now is just him working beyond what he wants to work, letting him know that I'm, at, I'm the boss, I'm the leader, uh, letting him know that aspect. Uh, so after I do this, okay, I like to uh, add another, oh, no, I didn't tell you to stop. No, we're going this way, not that way. There we go. There we go. Now this may seem stupid and boring to do this, uh, but this is this is the foundation uh, the, of just making them work. Um, so once they're good at this, like I was saying, once they're good at this, I let them stop. Say, oh, oh, Mr. Cut Corners. Okay, come on into me. Join up. Okay, there we go. Good guy. Okay, and then I make them jump some barrels. Okay, make them jump some barrels. So I'll put some barrels out real quick and uh, we'll, we'll see, we'll make him work a little bit more because jumping barrels is one of those things that uh, again, it changes the gate up. So everything you do, and in fact, the points test manual says this uh, a lot of different times, is everything you do for training both the uh, trooper and the horse is you do everything first at the walk, then at the trot, and then at the gallop. Uh, same thing with horses, you ever, you, all the principles you train, whether it's giving to pressure or whether it's uh, listening to you or taking cues, uh, you always do it at the walk, then the trot, then the gallop, and then you throw in other uh, gate changers like uh, some jumps or anything like that, which again builds that connection, those synapses, and helps them understand the principles that you're teaching them. Right, let's get some barrels out there. 
All right, so here we go. Got some barrels out. We'll see if he jumps barrels. Like I said again, uh, this is a good test. It changes the gate one more time. It messes the gate up, uh, and we'll see uh, if he uh, still wants to throw a fit. So, and like I said, to me, the, the, found, the foundation, the principles of good horsemanship and having a good horse, especially for cavalry reenacting, uh, to where they're not just going crazy, is number one, they have to know that you are the leader and, and work with you and do what you say. Uh, and how you do that is by making them work beyond what they want to work, okay? And let, you know, let them throw their fit. Well, not let them throw their fits. You know, work them past throwing their fits to where they'll do what, they'll, what you say, even if they don't want to. Step number two is to have them trust you to where they'll actually want to do it, right? So uh, again, building that trust is just working with them, training with them, spending time with them. Again, it's like any other relationship, it takes time. Uh, and of course, the uh, next thing we'll do is, is build that trust and work together and try to connect the uh, objectives of learning here with a new gate of, of jumping the uh, new gate of uh, jumping these barrels here. So I'll go ahead and I'll send them out. Okay, we'll send them out. Back, 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 back. At the trot. There we go. Good job. Keep working them. Make him go. Oh, stop, come on. There we go. Good job. So at least he didn't just kick him. Some of our other horses, they just, they just kick him and walk through him. Let's see if he jumps this time. There we go, good job. Excellent, come on. Again, this is, oh, he's throwing a fit there, right? Oh, oh, don't oh, come on. <laughs> come on. So, so if you notice, again, he doesn't want to work. He doesn't want to jump. It's a lot of effort. It's a lot of effort to jump. Oh, he's throwing a fit. There we go. Let's see if he does it again here. So again, these barrels make him work a little bit harder than just a normal trot. There we go. Good job. Oh. Let's reward him by letting him relax. Making him realize, hey, good job on those barrels, man. Good job on those barrels. Yeah, so make some work. Make some realize that you're gonna make him do it no matter what. And that he's gonna do it. He's not gonna, you know, he's not gonna not do it. And so it, all, all these little hands-on things that you do in the field, see if he follows me here. Uh, so all these little hands-on things that you do, uh, even the groundwork. I'm a huge fan of groundwork. Number one, some of, for some of the older reenactors, uh, you can still do this, get a good quality horse uh, on the ground, and once you're on them, you know, then, then you, you know, take that next step. Uh, but uh, I, I love the groundwork, because number one, it's safer, especially for a horse that you're not a whole, <laughs> whole, whole heck of a lot sure of. Uh, and number two, it's still, you know, still something you can do. You know, get home from work, get some groundwork in 10, 15 minutes without taking 10 or 15 minutes just to saddle the guy. So, um, it's good stuff. Let's go the other way. Let's go the other way. No, 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 no. Other way, other way. Other way, other way. Come on. There we go. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, let's fix those. So, this is a good example of you know, not enforcing that ability that he learned that he can just kick those over. So we're gonna try to work him hard around this next time. Make him hurt, go work, or not hurt, work harder. Trot, 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 trot. There we go, good job, good job. So again, you're working around, horse is coming around. All right. Coming up the barrels, jump, good job, excellent. And we'll just keep doing this. Again, this just makes him work harder. It's good for him to do here. Makes a good cavalry horse. So then hopefully, old Frank won't, uh, won't get reared off here. <laughs> Sorry, Frank. <laughs> yeah, these, it's one of those horses that I say, well, he's good. He's ne never uh, thrown me off. Uh, and poor Frank got thrown off, I think three times at the GAC. So, and again, it's all this work. All this work that allows him to do that, okay? We'll do a couple more times and we'll call it a good day, okay? Always end on a good note. You always wanna end on a good note. Help him know that he's doing a good job, right? I wanna see if I can't get him in a lope here or a gallop, something. Canner. Oh, 
There we go. Come on. There we go. Good canter. Good job. One more. One more. Good job. Oh. Oh. Okay, good job. Good job. Come on. No. Did it make you mad? You gonna come to me? Come to me? Did I make you mad? I did. I did make you mad. Little teenager here, a rebellion. Come here. All right, we'll call that good. Oh, not Oki, what a huge doc. That's who you are, doc. All right. Doc, let's say bye to the camera here. No? <laughs> I've had it. All right, guys. Uh, so we'll end on that. No, I just want to throw out, uh, I, think, I think this is the first horsemanship one we've done. Uh, but again, as, as uh, Mounted Cavalry, this is a, uh, a commitment that we make year long. It's, it's not just reenactments. It's not just per event. Uh, this is something that we do that uh, makes us commit on a year long basis. We feed them, we care for them, we spend our time with them. And it's not just us perfecting our drill. Uh, it's us perfecting our horses, right? And I'm not, again, I'm not proclaiming to be a horse trainer uh, in fact almost everyone else i ride with is way better than i am uh, these are just things that i uh, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer in being a lifelong learner uh, I, you know i listen to carson james i listen to uh, pirelli i listen to some of the other guys on youtube uh, i listen to you know back in the day uh, some of the other trainers out there uh, but when it comes to the foundations definitely don't just take your horse not do anything with it all year long and just go to event after an event after an event because all that does is just breed a horse who will just not be controllable he'll freak out and basically what you're doing is you know you're encouraging him to act up on those events because during an event is not the time to train okay it's like uh, teaching or like training kids or raising kids. Uh, you got to be careful what you ask a kid to do because then you have to be willing to then discipline them or stick through it. Uh, like for instance, eat that dinner. Or like if you say you have to eat all that dinner before you get a cookie, then you have to sit there and endure all as long as it takes, as long as stubborn as they are to uh, to do that. And so you got to be careful what you ask a horse to do because whatever you ask him to do, you got to go through with it because as soon as you say, like if you make him go across a creek and he doesn't and you just say, ah, no, forget it, I'll just, you know, we'll train on it tomorrow. Oh, we'll train on it tomorrow. Um, well, that's kind of interesting. Chinook. Double bladed Chinook helicopter coming in. Yeah, you don't see that too often. It's a firefighting one because, uh, yeah, it must be a wildfire near here. Oh, it's coming right over us. All right. Anyways, so you'll see, you're, you'll hear that in the background. Um, but you got to be careful what you ask a horse to do because if you don't want them, if you don't want to commit to something, then don't ask them to do it. Uh, like I said, if you go across the creek and you say, ah, forget it, we'll just, you will do it later. Um, well, no, because then the horse realizes that he can do whatever he wants. He realizes that, that you're not the boss, that he can, that he can make you do something. And so you got to be careful what you ask these horses to do. I'm a firm believer that once you ask a horse to do something, you follow through with it. Even if it's just getting off and leading them across, they have to end on that good note of what you asked them to do. Uh, so with that, let's just end uh, with this episode of 11th Ohio, and I uh, hope this was useful. Again, this is just me, hopefully not too boring for you. Uh, just me uh, warming up on one of our uh, more quirky horses that we have. So uh, old Doc here, who uh, threw off uh, one of our best riders, Frank Blaha. Uh, he's uh, Frank is an awesome rider, and uh, and he threw threw him off a couple times so uh, with that you know we, we definitely got to work on them don't don't not work on your horses this is a commitment just like you learn drill just like uh, on the infantry side you should study drill you should I mean you should be in the books uh, there you know at night studying 
you know, for cavalry troopers, you got to make sure you're out here on the round pen or in the arena uh, working with them. So, uh, and again, don't just do calf stuff. Do uh, do other events, you know, whether it's eventing or jumping or uh, on the western side. You know, we do a lot of uh, ropings or just gatherings or team pinning or whatever it is. Uh, do something with your horse. The more you do with your horse, the better that horse will be. So for that, guys, I appreciate you watching. I uh, appreciate you. Uh, like us on Facebook. Please uh, also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, please ring the bell, the notifier, or else YouTube apparently won't notify you every time we uh, go on videos. Uh, and make sure you get, that, get, get in that primary research, get in that material. Uh, and until we see you next time, ride hard.